Hi, my name is Thomas Gustafsson and I'm the Chief PKI Officer at KeyFactor. In this brief video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to issue a client authentication certificate using the ADBCA community container. It's a pretty short video tutorial. I will start with the ADBCA community container started. So there's a separate tutorial how to get that up and running. I will create some basic profiles and I will issue a client authentication certificate in the form of a PKCS12 key store. I will also download the CA certificate used to issue this key, uh, this certificate, so we can use it in a later tutorial. So let's get started. So here's my EWCA community container up and running. I will uh, copy the link to get to the administration UI. And I will accept the risks, which are explained in the uh, previous tutorial for starting this. So I'm in the EDBCA administration interface. So to issue a uh, client certificate, I could just add an identity or a user, which is me, uh, using the default profiles. But it's kind of messy with a lot of fields that I don't uh, want to use. So I will create two basic new profiles. So it means one certificate profile telling what type of certificate it is and one end entity profile uh, providing my personal uh, details. So I will start with creating a certificate profile and I will clone the end user uh, template profile. Call it client auth create from template and I can edit that. So this is a pretty basic profile, so I will not change much. I will uh, okay, limit validity to only one year. I will not use the non-repudiation key usage, and I will uh, set the only the client authentication uh, extended key usage. Yeah, I think that's that makes up for a pretty decent basic uh, certificate profile. So I will save that. Then I will go to end entry profiles. And I will create a uh, new one here as well called client auth. Use the same name, but you don't have to use that. You can use totally different names. If I edit that, I can see which fields I want. Okay, I will use an end entry email field. Uh, here I put what subject in attributes I want uh, to be forced to enter. Uh, common name is good. I'm happy with that. I will uh, add an email address to my certificate. So I'll put an add an input field for that and I'll use the uh, end entry email field. For uh, certificate profiles, I will select uh, only the one that I just created. So it will be the only one allowed. And I will make uh, P12 file my default token type, but I'll leave others to be uh, allowed. Okay, that makes for a pretty decent end entry profile. So I'll save that. So now I can uh, add myself. So in this mode of operation, I will pre-register myself as an end entity or a user, and then I will issue my certificate. So there are many different types of mode of operations for automation that you can use, but this is a, a fairly simple one for a demo. And also for in practice, actually. So uh, my username, I will give a one-time enrollment code, which I will uh, use to pick up my certificate. I will enter my uh, email address. And I ask the common name, I will enter my name. So that's okay. And I will check that we'll use RFC 822 name as a subject alternative name in the certificate. Uh, that's good enough. Add this identity. Added. Then I will go and pick up my certificate. So typically those stuff I just did would be done by an administrator and then the, the uh, user can go to the RA UI and pick up uh, his or her certificate. So this is more used for uh, end users. So I will use the username that I entered and my one-time enrollment code and it's checks. In this kind, so now I haven't limited what type of keys I can use. So I have a long list. 
but I can also limit it so the list only displays, for example, RSA 2048, which is what I select for this certificate. Okay, and I will download the PKCS 12 a key store. Uh, then I also want the uh, CA certificate. And uh, there's a menu entry for that, CA certificates and CRLs. And here I can see my management CA that was used to issue this uh, the certificate I just downloaded. So I will download that as well as a PEM format. So I downloaded that. So now we can see in my file system, I have one management CA PEM certificate file for the, uh, the CA and the P12 key store for uh, which has my personal private key and certificate. Now, the last thing I can do is uh, install it in my web browser, and then it's ready for use for website authentication. So in Firefox that I'm using, uh, there's settings and privacy and security. In other browsers, you will find the same functionality in uh, just another location. So I go to view certificates, and I can click import, uh, downloads uh, my P12 key store and it's the same one time uh, enrollment code. Okay, so I imported the certificate. So now I have issued a client certificate and I have downloaded the C certificate and I also installed the client certificate in my web browser. So that's all there is uh, to it. There is, of course, lots of resources online. There's the EGBCA community website at egbca.org. There's the EGBCA community on Docker Hub, which is the EGBCA container that I was running to use this, to run this demo. There is uh, lots of documentation on doc.primekey.com. And if you need uh, enterprise support and SLA and additional functionality, there is an enterprise version of EGBCA at Key Factor. So thank you for watching. Bye.